All right, guys. Switching from a draft tube to a PCV. So, on Dave's TechNet, it explains this whole process, and he even sells a prefab kit to switch it right over. So it saves yourself all the headache. You just pop this out, pop this stuff in, you're done for $130. Got the PCV valve. I got. This is all Napa part numbers, by the way. 29300 is the same as the 297 valve. I got a grommet. Not sure what it's from. I just matched up the valve to the grommet. I got all three of these fittings 1 8 NPT. This is an 1 8 MPT female to, I think, 5 8. Let me see. I believe it was 5 8. Um, I don't know what it was anyway. 3 8 fuel line. And this is 1 8 NPT to a quarter inch hose for the wipers. This screws directly into the intake manifold, as I will show later. It's going to go like that. This is how much it cost me. I got all three brass pieces. I got the PCV valve. I got the brake line and I got a foot of 3 8 hose, which I don't need that much, but got it all. Here are all the part numbers. And I can't remember which is which, but that's all you need right there. Every single one of those numbers at Napa is what you need. And that's it. Grand total, remember, Dave's kit is 130, I think. 2920 in parts. The only thing you have to do is hand bend this line, which isn't that big of a deal. So, we come out here, we take the spare draft tube, we cut it off, and here's what we're left with. I need to get that perforated tube out of there. I can't remember how I got it out of, I got it out of one of them. I have another one of these that I cut off that was a little bit shorter. So I wanted to do another one that was longer. So I'm gonna pop that out and I'll let y'all know how I got that out here in a sec. And then I'm gonna take this cap. Now some of them have a flat cap like this. This is the original 51. Some of them have a cap with that X on it like that. So I just pop this cap off with a flathead screwdriver and a hammer and swap caps. The X cap was on the newer one. I believe that's off the, it's either the 55 motor or the 58 motor. I don't know which one it was, but, and I just put the X cap on there so I can switch back if I need to. So I need to drill this for, uh, I'm gonna put this on top and I'm going to Stick that down to this cap right here. I'm gonna drill this big enough. This washer right here is the exact thickness I need for this grommet. Let me see if I can do this while I'm holding the phone. Perfect. So, I'm gonna to have to drill this hole out and this big enough for the valve, which is almost there, but not quite. I'm just gonna use some step drill bits. And I'm gonna drill this hole bigger. I'm gonna seal this to this. And call it a day because this is too thin for this grommet to work um, I want to say that's probably an eighth thick maybe now nah, probably a little bit more probably three eighths I don't know how many, I don't know how thick it is but anyway get the grommet go to the ace hardware or wherever figure it out I'm gonna paint it all up black I'm gonna go out I'm gonna bend the line I'm gonna call it a day retune the carb and we should be golden so I shall return so I grabbed it with some needle nose and it just twists out just want to show you what it looks like before I pop it all the way out and there it is so that's what that screen looks like toss that over here with that because that's all garbage toss those over there and get all the junk off the tip of them 
And now, it's time to get all the gunk out. Which I don't know what I'm going to use, but I'll figure something out. Turns out I had a can of brake clean. Had no idea. Got it nice and sparkly in there. And I cleaned this off as well. So I can use some right stuff and seal that to it. Center punched it, and now I'm gonna start drilling. And I'm gonna jump up the step bits, I guess fairly quickly. If I can hold it, that's the next thing. I gotta be able to hold it. Let me see if I have pliers in here. Yes, kinda. I don't know if these are gonna be big enough, but we're gonna find out. All right, I'll be back. So here's where we are. Got the hole drilled, got the grommet installed. Perfect fit. Um, I'm gonna extend this tube. I'm gonna go, it's two inches in diameter. So I'm going to uh, buy some two inch exhaust pipe. I'm gonna extend it probably, I don't know, another four inches or so, three inches. Whatever the overall length of the tube is before I cut it, what it was, I'm going to extend this so it's going to be up here. Just for make it a little less likely to suck the oil into the valve. Um, got to paint this black. Actually, I'm probably going to do that tonight. Just so it kind of blends in a little bit better. And then I'm going to bend this line up and pop it all in and it'll be done. We'll see how she runs. I got a vacuum gauge hooked up to the car right now. So uh, I'm going to take it out on the highway and see how the vacuum is. I was reading one thing. I actually started a conversation on Chevy Talk. And uh, one guy was dead set on hooking it up to the air cleaner. So it sucks through the carburetor, which makes sense, but I don't have an oil bath air cleaner. And I have no intention on getting an oil bath air cleaner. And everybody else said hook it to the intake manifold. And the guy was like, well, then the vacuum is being pulled at the exact wrong time, which is true. At idle, it's going to be highest. And when you're under load on the highway or whatever, it's going to be lowest. But I want to see exactly how low. So I'm going to keep going, get this finished up. I'll let y'all, I'll video while I'm driving so y'all can see the vacuum as I shift gears and when I'm going on the highway in fifth gear at 70 miles an hour I'll show you the vacuum gauge show exactly where we're at but this is where we're at for now I'm going to go by the exhaust pipe tonight from AutoZone two inch pipe extend this a little bit and I'm going to weld it tomorrow repaint it and then it's on all right I got the pipe it's one and seven eighths inner diameter and it's almost dead on two inches. I mean, it's like as perfect as I could ask for. But the only thing is, this doesn't fit over it. And I could probably get the tubing expanded a little bit, but I might just weld that on. Weld that cap to that and then call it a day. I don't know if that'd be okay for the grommet or not, though. But then again, I could just pop the grommet out of there. Because that sealant doesn't have anything to do with the grommet. So I might do that. But anyway, about to weld these two together right now. I am using flux because I don't feel like switching the whole machine over. Not that it takes forever. Because that's just a couple of wing nuts to change those leads. But it's the wire. And then I have to run it all through and get it all out of the... Uh, whatever. You know what I'm saying. So I'm just going to use flux. Not a huge deal. Here we go. All right, there it is, welded up. I am out of practice like crazy. Um, those are my welds. Look like junk. Burn through in one spot. It looks like I burned through there, but I didn't. You know, cup over this end and. Yeah, see, no light coming through. So, it's good. I'm going to hit it with some high temp paint. 
and I was going to either have this expanded, but I'm tired of paying money. I was going to weld that on there, but then it would never come off. So I'm just going to use the right stuff, which I used to seal that washer to this. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to right stuff it on there and seal her up. And that way, if I ever have to get in there for any reason, I can just peel it off, peel the right stuff off and rewrite stuff it if necessary. So that's where we're at. Get the PCV valve out of the engine a little bit. Um, my draft tube had, the one that's on the car now, had a little bit of oil up in here. So the tube would have come off right about here, the breather tube. It's almost the exact same length, so it should be good. And uh, hopefully I don't run through PCV valves. Hopefully I don't plug it up and don't let the motor breathe. But it's already leaking oil everywhere, so whatever. So there we are. Next step, painting it up. All right, so here's where my vacuum gauge is sitting at idle. It should be, it's a little low, but not much. Like one, one notch low. car is fully warmed up. Um, I just drove to, just drove about 16 minutes. Now we're going to see how it does on the highway. See all that smoke? I don't know if you can see that smoke right there, but all that's gone. So let me get going and we'll see how it goes. guys let the games begin of course we have the factory wiper joint whatever you want to call that thing I don't know if it has a name or not and the factory draft tube so we have the line and by the way I got this at uh, AutoZone there's the number it's a little long but it's the poly armor that you can bend by hand. So it's gonna be much better because you don't have to have a bender. That's what that fuel line is right here. And I bent it all by hand and it was perfect. Now I wanna get another one and re-bend it by hand. Looks like it's about the same size actually. Maybe if I have enough left over, I can do that. Um, I wanna do them all, I wanna route them below between the intake and the water pump if I can. But anyway, back to business. Got this. Kind of looks horrible, but whatever. PCV valve. That's a Napa number. Same same thing uh, Dave uses in his. You got these three pieces. So, first order of business. Pop that off. Oh, my uh, carb setting is one and a half turns out right now, and it runs perfectly. All right, hang on. All right, so this is only screwed in hand tight, so I don't know why I can't get it, but it's 9 16 anyway. So just do that. This pops right out. 
I mean, this conversion is going to take 30 seconds <laughs> after I get the line bent up and cut. It's going to be so fast. That's one eighth NPT. Done. Now, see if I can do this one handed. Probably not. Watch. All right, bear with me one sec. I'll be right back. Man, that was a pain in the butt to line up. It's going in nice and easy now, though. Now, you want to make sure it's in all the way, but you don't want to go too far and crack the manifold because it's just cast iron. Don't crack the manifold, whatever you do. Can you see the steam coming out? All right, we're gonna keep that in the car just in case. Hook the wiper back up to this. It's a quarter inch nipple. Boom, wiper's hooked up. All right, next up, draft tube comes out. Now, yours may be bolted on, mine is not. See right there, bolts on. There's oil in it and that's my concern, is that it's gonna um, clog up that valve, but we'll see. Only time will tell, and I'm gonna keep that in the car with me as well. Now, take this, get the side that looks the best. Now you should have a baffle in there to keep oil out, so I don't even know how oil's getting past it. But anyway, push that down in there and make sure it's in so it's not going to pop out on you. All right, that's in. There we go. That's half of it. Next up, take your valve. If only every job was one-handed like this. You have to figure out which way you're going to route your line. I'm going to go under the car to get this valve. All right, let's hope I can reach it. Of course, it's like back as far as possible. I need to do is touch that pipe with my hands because I literally just turned this thing off. Oh, also, the valve comes with this little plug. Put it in the hole. All right, let's try this again. Second time's a charm, right? Oh, make sure there's no uh, dirt or anything. Obviously, it's gravity-fed. There are some that are spring-loaded. This is not one of them. All right, bear with me one sec. I can't... All right, wait a minute. All right, I'll be right back. All right, the valve is in. Now... Needless to say, I probably won't pop the hood much after this because it's going to look not so hot, but whatever. All right. Now, got a foot of hose because that's all they would sell it to me in. It is not for fuel injection. So I guess it's just vacuum hose. This is also from Napa. So let me bend up my tubing and see where we're at. Hopefully I have enough to get this fuel line done too. See, the goal is to go between the water pump and the water outlet housing, but I don't know if that's feasible or not. I guess it is because there are no water pump bolts on the top there. And as long as I'm clearing everything right here and it goes up and straight under, I should be okay. So let's see what we can do here. Now bending it is gonna take two hands, so I can't video that, but I'll be back. All right, so this bend by hand line sucks. I don't know how I got these fuel lines bent so smooth, but on here, everything kinked. It kinked. That one didn't kink, but it's a wide flowing line. I didn't plan on going like that. My intention was to go under there. Kinked. Kinked. And this is way too long. Now, it's not completely closed off, so I'm not super worried about it. I'm going to kick it on. We're going to see what happens here real quick. 
I have a feeling it's going to be a no-go for this line anyway. I'm going to have to buy another one and a tubing bender and try it. I used the wheel on my floor jack. I used a rubber mallet head. So let's see here real quick what happens. I'll bring you all along with me while I start it. We'll see how she goes. Now it's still warm for the most part. Pull the choke out a tiny bit. It's in neutral. Kick the key on. partially out here's the choke all the way in and that's with the PCB valve doing its thing that's I mean this is maximum vacuum right now it's at idle Let's see what happens with the wipers wipers work fine well I'm about to drive this thing and we will see what happens This is going between the fan and the water outlet housing, which I don't like, but I mean, it has plenty of fans, so I'm not too worried about it. The only thing I don't like is it's pushing hard on this fuel line right here. It's getting kind of warm. All right, I'm going to take it for a spin and see what happens. I'll let you know. All right, so I feel like everything I do makes the car run better. Technically now, it should be pulling gas is out of the bottom of the engine right now because I'm at idle. It feels like it's running smooth, but I seriously doubt that's due to the PCV valve. But I don't have a way of telling. I need oil. As you can see, it's a little low. So I'll be back to check in.